Hey, what the hell's going on, you guys? It's Triple Play Negative AE, and welcome back to another episode of Higurashi When They Cry. Um, last we left off, we were talking about. Or, no, we weren't talking about anything. We were um, digging up our, the corpse to make sure that it was actually there. Because this whole world has been real weird ever since we killed what's his name, but he's still alive. So. We went back to our corpse location, and now Oishi-san is here. <sighs> um, I guess we're going to see what happens. Good evening. New fu fu, -fu the moon sure is beautiful tonight. The coarseness in my brain shot through my whole spine and left me at my waist. The strength of my body all left me through my hips, and I crouched down with a splash into the sea of mud I dug myself. Oh, oh shit. <laughs> it wasn't only Oishi, but five or six of them in a row, men wearing raincoats. I had no inkling that this was... That I had no inkling that this many people had gotten so close. It was like once I turned on the lantern, they just appeared there, sliding out of the shadows. They just want to see if there's a body there. No, thank you, I said. When I tried to get up and turn around, two men blocked the rat. They stood on either side of me and lifted me up with amazing strength, and then threw me into the sea of mud. As I soaked in the mud bath I dug for myself, I looked up at the silhouettes looking down at me. Uishi squatted, picked up my shovel, and threw it at my feet for me. It bounced loudly off the mud and hit me in the face. Hora. I'm curious too. Wouldn't. I couldn't bear the oppressiveness of the silhouette surrounding me, and slowly I stuck the shovel into the mud again. I felt like I was digging my own grave. Quite fucking literally. Did that game set this whole situ. Did this game set this whole situation up just so it could use that? I don't know about that one. <laughs> that was pretty. Clever. I don't know. If I kept digging, it wouldn't matter whether there was a tattoo or not, because that man's corpse would appear eventually. It was all over. Surrounded on all sides and nowhere to go. Like, just couldn't figure it out, no matter how much I thought about it. Why were they here? Is it Takano san? Yeah, it's. No. What? You told what's his name everything. We just came from there. You told what's his name everything. Uh, coach. Why do I think it's Takano san? Damn, Oishi kicked me in the back, which took me by surprise, sending me flying into the mud. Oishi kicks some mud in my face. Okay, continue digging, dude. We don't. Maybe the world had changed after that night. But if I went even further back, didn't it start when this guy showed up? That was when our peaceful days had been taken from us. Ever since he showed up and he now meets. Has that always been the case? I guess fucking so. Huh.
That's interesting. But why? He is he is the They mentioned this before, but they they called him like the crow or something or the the He's like a bad omen, this guy. But I it, yeah, kinda. But why? My feet got harder and heavier at this point. I started to think something was odd. Hadn't they buried him this deep on that night? Or, I hadn't buried him this deep on that night, had I? Exhaustion peaked and I sat down on the spot. <laughs> Pull out their own sinister looking shovels. Grab pulled me out of the hole and threw me to the ground. The rest of the men stepped into the hole I dug and started shuffling themselves. As I stared at them dumbfounded, Oishi staunted over, squatted down to look at me directly. Maebara Kate. Anata no shumi wa... Amen. I didn't respond. Oishi took the one... one of the tin buckets they were using to bail out the muddy water, scooped up some of it and splashed the whole thing in my face. <coughs> これ以上いくら濡れても全然わかりませんね。もう一回聞きますよ。あなたの趣味はそんな趣味のやつ。いるもんか。ゆうさんなだばかのフォーマリーワーター。ペブルズインイツタウン。あのあのホルト。私花
I'm sorry. Yeah. Sumari Nandus Coconi Ananga Ate Minasan. So shall work a day. Korea Maikana, nee, my barasan. My issue, my issue with the situation is that the hole was dug. So then someone saw it and undug them up or undug them up. But he's alive. Okay, wait. We don't know that. Everything that we've done so far, we don't know. Okay. Wait a second. Okay. Wait a second. I'm piecing together something that may or may not be the truth. Here we go. Okay, I have a theory. I'm back on the game. Alright, I'm no longer surprised. Here's what's happening. Satoko, in on it. Guaranteed. Here's what's happening. Satoko is telling us that he is still alive. They know. They know that I killed somebody on that night. That's why when I entered the room, everything was a little bit off. If you remember when I entered the room, everybody was just kind of like blank. Everybody was just like, what? Like, uh, and then I was like, I should leave the room. Like, leave. But I didn't leave, and it was revealed to me that I was at the party. But I don't think that's the truth. I think the whole town, much like the first one, when the whole town was chasing me down and trying to get trying to get me down, I think much like the first one, the whole town or most of the town is in on it. I don't know. I, won't, I don't want to say the whole town, but I want to say most of the town. Now, when I asked Satoko, it's like, why isn't your uh, uncle gone? Um, your uncle was still there. I think that maybe that's not true. The only thing that I have not done to confirm that night. So I confirmed that the baseball bat was missing. We confirmed that indeed a hole was dug. I'm sorry I'm talking forever, but I just want to explain my point. We confirmed that there was a hole dug. We confirmed that the bat was gone. We confirmed that, um, that we know that we were doing, doing stuff on that night. The only thing that doesn't check out and the only thing that we haven't done yet is check Satoko's house for the uncle. Not once did we check that. Um, and it would make sense for Rena and Mion to want me to go crazy over this because I'm not oyashiro -sama. I'm not supposed to be committing these curses. So they want me dead or something. Or something along those lines. I don't know what, what they want. Because I don't know the demon code. And I would like to know the demon code, but they haven't told me yet. So I think... The only thing that explains this is that Satoko's in on it and she's telling a lie. Go check Satoko's house. I'm ready. No. The only thing we haven't done is go like go check him in person. Go check now I know. Now I know exactly what's happening. I killed him, I buried him, I had absolute unwavering confidence in that fact. And did I fail to kill him? And after I left here, he did. He had started breathing again, crawled out, and was gone. And gone back to Satoko's house. Is that it? No. Someone followed you, undug him, took him out, re re put back the hole, and now Satoko is lying to you, saying that he's still alive, but he is not still alive. This is all a ruse to try and make you feel crazy.
We don't know that. That's the thing, is we don't know he's alive. For sure. Satoko has just told us that. The only thing to do is go to Satoko's house and see him for yourself. I agree, dead people don't like to play by the rules here in Hinamizawa. Exactly. Go kill him again. Go see what happens if you go try to kill him again. Like how it's okay for them to just throw mud in my face and treat me like shit for digging a hole in the rain. Yeah, it's suspicious, but it's like, that was rude. No apologies, like, oh, I'm sorry, we thought you were a criminal. Just like, fuck you. Lame. I'm gonna read those tips. <laughs> yeah, I, I figured it out. I, I, there was a long time where I was like, what the hell is going on? But now with that, with the body gone, someone dug it up. I could see Rena coming in, you know, digging up the body, uh, placing it somewhere else. Then, in a demon meeting, because I know they have them, they demon meet, and they tell Satoko to lie about it. Satoko is now lying about it, because they're all in on it together. And that's how it works. All right, uh, record of malice or, or injury request or in whatever. Okinawa Police Station Command Center transmission recording, June twentieth, eight oh eight p.m. Kochira Okinawa PS, Kando Ryoko de. Jesus. Jesus Christ, get a new radio. Fukushima Shishibone. ハノ4344。少々お時間もらえますが。お願いします。応答<笑> What, what are they telling me that they know Takano-san was there? He said it smelled. He said the food smelled. He said it smelled because I smelled. He said I smelled because I don't take baths. He said to take a bath three times a day because I was a smelly person. What is this, a third grader? He said I had to stay in the bath for a very... for a long time. He must be possessed by something too. This is the same man who... This is the same thing the man who died said. Why does he know what that man said before? That much is obvious. I feel like there was more information there that I didn't gather, necessarily. <clears throat> I'm... 
Keiichi's definitely different in this one. I think we can all agree that Keiichi is like a different person in this one. Um, saying that he's possessed by the same thing that Satoshi was possessed by, I'm guessing is what that is referring to. Uh, and that the thing that's possessing Keiichi is bad and they want to push him off a cliff, but who is who is speaking? Um, that I don't know. Alright. Let's continue. Body wasn't there. Police didn't arrest me because of that. But I didn't know whether to feel happy about it. Just like Satoko had said, I'd failed to kill her uncle. But she said. Go check, dude. Like, I really want him to go check. The body wasn't there, so I was forced to conclude as much, no matter what strange natural disaster, coincidence, or miracle it might have implied. In order to free Satoko, I became a demon. This abnormal world was my reward. Yes. Metaphorically, I had fallen into the demon world. But if that price had been in exchange for the life of Satoko's uncle, that would have been fine. Since Satoko's uncle was still alive, still shackling her to him, I needed to become a demon once again. One more time. No. As many times as it took. I would kill that man over and over again until Satoko was liberated. I had already awoken. I looked at the clock to see that it was early in the morning, just about five. It was already light outside. Once I had hardened my resolve to become a demon again, I could feel my whole body teeming with the awakened power once more. Time wasn't an issue, no matter what I'd do it. Uh, got myself up. Okay, I got myself up. The exhaustion from the past two days was completely sucked away, and I didn't even feel any sleepy anymore either. I slowly rose and made sure my body was moving like I wanted it to. I could feel the blood flowing through each and every one of my fingers. As I got dressed, I let my mind wander. I had a strange thought. These two days, while I've said it was for Satoko's sake, the only thing on my mind has been killing. I've said it was for Satoko, but while actually carrying out the act, I had completely forgotten about Satoko, albeit only temporarily. Maybe initially it was for Satoko's sake, but now I was just a demon, killing for the sake of killing. And as a result, I've sunk into a world fit for such a demon. Maybe it was the same for Satoshi. He resolved himself to kill his aunt to save Satoko, became a demon, and disappeared from the sunlit Hinamizawa, vanishing into the demon world. Which meant that after all was said and done, I'd met the same fate as him. I tried to avoid making the same mistakes, but it happened anyway. Which meant that maybe Satoshi was here. Satoshi, Satoshi had come to this world the year before me, so he would be here somewhere. Then, surprised, I stopped walking. The second set of footsteps I'd grown so used to hearing. The empty, lifeless air wouldn't give me an answer. But I felt a strange kind of relief that there was someone there. That Satoshi had stuck with me the whole time. Let's go, Satoshi. Once more. Haha. <laughs> this time we will set Satoko free for sure. I also kind of like that in this one we're making friends with the demon instead of being scared of it. Like, oh, the, the, the footsteps behind me are just Satoshi. That's kind of cool. I mean, assuming that the footsteps don't murder me. I quietly slipped out of my house so my parents wouldn't notice. They caught me now, when I've been out way too late for two days now, they give me a really angry talking to. I didn't have the time to allow for that to happen. Today, I would put an end to it. If the dead body disappeared, then I didn't have to bury it. I could just burn it to ashes, and then 
take them with me so I could kill him again every time he resurrected. I'd do it again. I'd kill him again. And this time, I'd set her free. Outside, the morning light was so beautiful as to stagger belief. Interesting. I... That sentence is interesting. The morning light was so beautiful as to stagger belief. Might use stagger belief. My normal everyday conversation. Who knows? I went to the storage room to find weapons with which I could kill him for sure. Blunt or not, it didn't matter to me. Right now, I didn't need to care whether someone saw or if the police came. This world had gone crazy after all. A world where I'd showed up at the festival and had fun even though I wasn't there. Even if the police arrested me, I'd probably end up going right back home as if nothing happened. Both me and that other Keichime bar. Even without me, he'd fill in. I could vanish from Hinamisawa without anyone noticing. So basically, I didn't care if I was mistakenly killed. Even if I died, Keichi Mebara would remain. After all, this isn't the world I belong in. If I was going to be killed mistakenly for Satoko's sake, then that was just part of my duty as her nini. As those desperate thoughts became serious, morning air felt more refreshing to me. Strangely enough. It was a hatchet meant for chopping thick firewood. Its hefty steel blade was sinister almost as though it was a tool meant for killing people. I couldn't exactly take it out in public like that, so I wrapped it in a little tiny... Wait. I wrapped it a little in some old newspaper and tossed it into the basket on my bike. I apologize to my bike for some reason. For the past three days, I've only used it for dangerous things. I've been riding this bike ever since I lived in my old town. I could walk most places I wanted to go, so I hadn't used it all that much. My mom bought it for me when I entered cram school, thinking it would be a convenient way to get to the station since it was far away. So I'd always use it to get back and forth from the cram school. I'd only ever put textbooks and class materials in the front basket too. I'd never try to put a hatchet that I'd be using to kill someone in there. When I came to Hinamizawa, life finally felt fun. I met the best friends ever and had some of the greatest times ever. Those times might have been shattered now, but... It was my greatest wish that I could get them back, even if I had to risk my life to do it. That's how fun those times had been. I killed someone. Now I was at it again, needing to kill someone. Murder was a crime. I didn't believe that people should ever think murder was okay. But still, the times I had were enjoyable enough to me for me to commit such a crime. My friends were irreplaceable, and the time spent with them was a treasure. Hanging out, laughing, sometimes tricking each other, but always in a friendly way. I didn't fear committing any crime, as long as it was for the sake of taking back those times that gave my heart so much pleasure. Yes. This was a value I'd decided to uphold. It wasn't something I'd learned from a school teacher. It was a noble path that I chose for myself. I thought back when I'd first come to Inamizawa. And how on the very first day, Satoko had welcomed me with via a blackboard eraser with a rock in it. That welcome really surprised the heck out of me. She would laugh, get angry, cry. She was never boring. She was obviously the most childlike among us, but she was actually lively, full of vim and vigor and good at meddling in other people's businesses. Or business. That went for Mion, Rena, and Rika-chan, too. Wasn't Satoko the one at the center of everyone's laughing and banter? 
The Toka would try to look cool. Then Mian would make fun of her endlessly. Then Satoko would cry, which would put Rena in a state of ecstasy. Rika-chan would be greatly delighted. But I happen to get mixed up in it. We'd always fool around like that. It was lonely when someone wasn't around, but if I had come... If I had to name one for whom it was the worst, it would have been Satoko. Her smile was everyone's smile. Ever since she stopped smiling, so did the rest of us. And for the rest of us not smiling, it was the same as dying. It was just like when I silently, when I was silently going to cram school every day, just to maintain my unchanging test scores. So basically, we were nothing when she wasn't smiling. She was full of hot air, but she was our princess. Okay, cute and unhateable. In that case, I was her knight, searching for the dragon's castle in order to win her smile back. Then I saw an old woman in the ridge of a field waving to me. Is that an old woman? Simply wave back, refreshing way. Could I have really been feeling so happy waving like that? Toko's house would be right past this road, going beyond the rice paddies. Cicadas had woken too, and the next thing I knew, I was the audience to their daily chorus. I gave myself a hit or two in the head and drove away in my merry morning mood. This is kind of like carefree. I like it. I took a deep breath then tilted my head back, quelling in my pointless excitement. Or quelling my pointless excitement. The body wasn't there. The absent either meant my killing him had been an illusion or that I'd kill him. I killed him and he'd risen from the dead. If I was at the festival, well, no. They're giving you those two options, but it's not any of those options. It's that Satoko's lying to you. If I was at the festival, then maybe I should have considered it an illusion. Coach probably thought that way, which is why he's treated me like a lunatic. But it being an illusion was just impossible. I killed him without a doubt. Without a doubt. If that had been an illusion, then that would make all of the Sinamizawa I was in right now, an illusion. If that was the case, then here's how it would end. Or here's how it would end up. I was actually in a vegetative state due to tra a traffic accident, and was currently dreaming in a hospital bed about how great it would be to spend time with my friends in rice paddies like these. That was a terrifying thought, though. If this wasn't an illusion, then the only possible answer is that he'd been resurrected. It would make him a literal monster. If he was such a monster, then I was no less than a monster myself. Oh, he did. Oh, don't get me wrong. He did. It's just, people are lying to you. I didn't hesitate to kill someone, and I could even manipulate curses. Kondo-san had died probably because I'd cursed her. Maybe that was a little much. If Coach and Oishi died too, like I'd cursed them too yesterday, then I'd believe it. I think they're just guaranteed to die on Matanagashi. I set my bicycle aside and went to take a look. My motorbike wasn't there. Of course it wasn't. I sent it to hell that night, throwing it into the Onigafuchi swamp. Maybe. Just like how the corpse wasn't here, maybe the motorbike didn't get thrown into the swamp either? The fact that his bike wasn't here might have been because he'd gone to town and hadn't come back. Not necessarily because they'd thrown it into the swamp. If her uncle wasn't around, then that was convenient on its own. And I could just show myself in and wait for him to return, sharpening my hatchet. If... 
he was there. Forgotten sensations came back to my gut. A feeling of tension rose within me. The sensation was like poison dulling my actions, but it could also be the trigger to allow me to awaken my superhuman, otherworldly self. I held the hatchet, still wrapped in newspaper. Its weight in my hand was profound, sinister, and reliable. I didn't know what time it was without a clock, but it was probably a little before seven. Satoka would probably be awake preparing breakfast and her lunch. But her uncle would probably still be wallowing in indolence. A guy like him probably would have stayed up late drinking and probably always slept until noon. He's not there. Guaranteed. Satoko is evil. I considered ringing the doorbell and having Satoko open the door for me, but if her uncle woke up at the sound, I'd waste my chance of him still being asleep. If Satoko saw me sneaking inside without ringing the doorbell, she'd be surprised. If I ran into her, what would I say? I've come to kill your uncle for you, so stay quiet. No, I couldn't do that. That would be like making Satoko responsible for his death. Be quiet and go wait outside. Maybe that would do it. How would Satoko rea react to that? He would probably try and get me to give up on killing him. I would have to lie to somehow get her to go outside. Satoko didn't need to know that a murder was going to occur in this house. I couldn't quite think of a good lie to tell her, but I couldn't do much just standing around like this. I made up my mind and grabbed the doorknob. Slowly turned it. Pulled. It wasn't locked. The gap between the war the door and the wall steadily grew larger. The chain wasn't even on. The oppressive smell of life in Sudoku's house hit me. At the entrance, there were a few pairs of shoes and sandals. I couldn't tell whether he was here or not just by looking at them. Here's where I'm going to get my answer. The door is not locked, so I think that people are waiting for me in here. Most likely, Rena or Mion is in here as well. I could hear a television on somewhere. The television was in the messy dining room. Food was scattered about the table, giving the impression, giving an impression decidedly different from a happy family's mealtime. Meals were for eating food while thanking the person for making it. Meaning whatever occurred in this dining room wasn't a meal. Nobody in sight. No sign of anyone either. But with the television on, he must have been close. Have you anticipated my coming and be hiding, waiting for me? The tension I felt was so thick, so tight that I thought it would choke me. The newspaper wrapping the hatchet's thick blade didn't hamper its power at all. I tightened my grip on it. Then, very carefully, took a look around. I heard those peaceful feelings from before I arrived at here at Gone. Even the sound of sweat bubbling up on my brow got on my nerves. Yeah. It played the scary music, so I thought something crazy was happening. But, okay. Last night's dinner is on the table. I left the dining room keeping... It means breakfast isn't made yet. So Satoko's not... Made it. Highly possible that that, that that room was his own and that he slept there. I tiptoed up the edges of the stairs quietly. Quietly climbing without making a sound. He's dead. Couldn't hear any kind of snoring. I didn't hear anything up there. Went through a few rooms, slowly, quietly opening the doors, checking inside. But I still couldn't find anyone around. To search more efficiently, I got down on the floor and pressed my ear right up to it. I could hear the television in the dining room. A low hum, perhaps of boiling water. It was then that I started to harbor some feelings of suspicion. This house wasn't right. It 
seemed like people had been here since the TV was on, but it wasn't normal for nobody to be around this early in the morning. I silently descended to the stairs and went back to the dining room. I looked at the food scattered about. Completely dried up rice. Overturned bowl of miso soup. The package for a side dish brought at the bought at the supermarket. I could tell Satoko had definitely been the one who made this. The food was far from Mion's perfection or Rena's gentleness, but it was sincere. Judging by how she cooked for me at my house, and from the type and amount of side dishes, I deduced that the meal was from last night. The number stamped into the food package read 830620. June 20th, 1983. That was yesterday. And there was food for two, which meant that this was last night's dinner, and Satoko's uncle would have been here then. Stop it, Keiji. Don't even think about saying the word impossible again. Anyway, her uncle was here last night. That much was the truth. He had found fault with Satoko's food and thrown the bowl of miso soup and flung the rest everywhere. And deep within my feelings of calm and composure was lit a flame of anger and a c curse. Have I ever shown this man any mercy? Bump. I heard the sound again. The one from before, like a water boiler. Where is it coming from? Wasn't last night with Tanagashi? Oh no, last night was... Last night was the night I dug up the thing and Oishi was there. And then I woke up this morning. First floor, but where? Bathroom, maybe? Is this a Steinsgate situation? Steinsgate did this. Where they were like, oh, someone's dead in the bathroom. Or someone's dying in the bathroom. And then you open the door and it's just someone taking a bath. Playing the something, something weird's happening music, or the something's weird happening drone. It's just Satoko probably taking a bath.
丈夫か佐藤子俺だ健一だわかるか聞こえるか She's counting. One thousand thirty nine is like there's sixty seconds in a minute if she's counting every second in the thing. God, I can't do the math in my head. Um, that's 5,000, 5, 60. Okay, let's, let's round up to 6,000. Now she's at 10,000, so maybe that's not correct. Oh, it's Satoko. Can I read the tip again? Uh, it was Satoko. That was who was speaking. God, I don't remember the tip very well. Yeah, but now you're now you're being a vandal.
I'm a little confused. Okay, so I'm, I, I'm sorry for, for being slow. I'm a little confused. Oh, wow, it's 51-2. Oh, God, we're 51 minutes in. She was starting to come back. I cried tears of relief just knowing she'd improved even a little bit. Satoko turned over so she was lying on her face, then put a weak struggle to get up on her knee. I smoothly swept swept her up and put her on my back. The tower I put it on her seemed like it was about to fall off. Didn't hurt one bit to carry Satoko. She was light, too light. The lightness actually made me uneasy. Outside, it had gotten hotter as though eager to attack Satoko. Fucking cicadas. Why did I have to choose this morning to get so hot at? I didn't have time to swear at them. The clinic was this way. Hoisting Satoko on my back, I broke into a trot. All right, good. That's a good place to stop. Um, cool. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed this episode, please hit the like button. I appreciate it. Also, subscribe if you haven't done so already. Lots of visual novel and roguelike content on the channel. Um, but I mix it up from time to time. I'm gonna pause right here. Uh, so, um, Satoko's uncle's still dead. I think he's. I think he's dead. I think what it was, and the reason why I was freaked out for a little bit, um, was that I completely trusted everything everybody was saying. The idea that... Oh god, I'm so curious to read that tip again. I really want to read that tip again. So now I know it was Satoko who said that they were stinky, or, whatever, or that someone said they were stinky. I wonder why... He was possessed by the same thing. One day I'll push him into a hole. Possessed by the same thing that they were possessed by. I don't remember. I, I, I don't remember what the tip was. Because I feel like that tip is now really helpful because now we know it was her. Um, the, the idea that Satoko's uncle is dead, I, I don't know, because I guess he was there last night, which was the night that I was digging up the body, then he was there. Unless there's a, a demon with the ability to shapeshift? I don't know the rules. I've been saying that from the beginning, but I don't. I don't know the rules. Can demons shapeshift? Are there demons? I don't know. It seems like there is, but they keep bringing up the mental thing as like a backup plan, right? They so keep you on your toes. If they if they didn't bring up mental stuff sometimes, it would be a hundred percent that there was demons. But they're trying to present themselves as a slice of life with a scary horror thing. Uh There's a, I gotta think uh, like as a writer, right? When I when I when I'm looking at the story and I'm trying to write an interesting plot point, I'm looking towards the end of the game with the information that I have been given. It feels cheap. It feels. It feels like too predictable. Well, actually, I don't know. I want to say all these things like I feel like it's too predictable. I feel like it's it's going this way. But it's fooling me, you know? <laughs> um, I feel like it would be too predictable to come out and say that there's demons. Which is why I think that there's a, a mental thing because they've talked about it before. But that's why he's put it in there. Because it changes my... It changes my theory. So he could just be like hard set on demons and then throw in the mental thing to throw people off and that's why it's such a confusing game is because you don't know the rules you're stuck between this world that's that could be true and the world that you're presented with 
and I don't know which one is the truth. That being said, um, I originally thought that Satoko was lying to me, but I guess if he was there last night, then I don't know. Uh, and she said thank you for rescuing her. But then I'm gonna bring her to the doctor, and I don't want to bring her to this doctor, dude. I don't. Want, I don't like coach. I don't like anybody. I can't go to school anymore because coach is involved with the school. Um, co I'm gonna. Here's what's gonna happen, uh, and I'm gonna just predict the next episode. Ready? Um, Satoko. We're gonna bring Satoko to the doctor's office, and the doctor's office. And when we get there, you know, they're it, freaking. Coach is gonna look at me and be like, "Oh." You crazy motherfucker just overheated Satoko because you're crazy. And then I am going to be put down because he thinks that I did this to her. But I did not. Um, so there's a lot of stuff going on. I gotta go before I keep talking your off. <laughs> I apologize if I've yawned during this video. I just now realize that I'm yawning. Um, I am tired. I'm gonna go get some sleep. Thank you guys for watching. I will see you guys in the next episode of this, whatever that may be. And uh, peace out, you guys.